Welcome to the Barely Living Dread Girls podcast, where we like to get high and talk about horror movies. I'm Casey. And I'm Jess. And we're talking about the movie Triangle. Yay! That's this not week. the reaction I wanted from her. <laughs> okay, I picked this movie because I watched it when it came out, and I vaguely remembered that, and then... Another podcast that I love covered it, and I was like, oh, that movie, I gotta rewatch that before I watch that podcast. And then Jess was like, hey, what movie do you want to cover? And I was like, trying. <laughs> because, okay, uh, before we get into spoilers, please go watch this movie. It's from 2009, by the way. Please go watch this movie. It's so good. I don't care who you are. I love this movie. It's, it's... It's got Melissa George. She's amazing. It's got Liam Hemsworth, if you like those brothers. Liam Hemsworth broke Miley Cyrus's heart. He can get fucked. He does in this movie, though. You get to watch him die. I'm so excited. I know, but you're so excited over this baby Hemsworth, and I'm just like, bleh. Listen, I don't like him either, I can but buy myself flowers. I'm just trying to get people to see the movie. Write my name in the sand. Thor's cool. No, he's not. Whatever. Um, we love Miley. We stand Miley. But the thing is, you get to watch some stuff happen to the back of this guy's head. It's over and cool. over. It's really awesome. So, there, right there is your motivation. Also, yeah. So, this is a weird movie. <sighs> And I'm so happy that I picked it, but I don't know how we're going to talk about it. So if this episode doesn't make sense, that's on me. Because, so I'm going to, we're going to get into spoilers. Because I don't know how to not get into spoilers with this movie. It's a time loop movie. That's all I remember about it. It's got time loopy shit, and that's all I wanted. I was like, I want to see a movie where I'm just like, what? And this whole movie, I was like, what? <laughs> Okay, so what is the musical term? Help me out here if you remember. Is it a row or a round when you're like, like let's say you a start round. singing, row, row, row your boat, round. and then when you get to the boat part, I start singing, row, a row, round. row your boat. That's what this whole movie was. It is. It was a round. It was, we're going to start the movie here. And then when we get back, when we get to this point, we're starting the movie over again. And then over again. Yeah. And it's just like, it's the very, same shit over and over again. It's, it's monotonous. Very similar and not to Happy Death Day. Because although you are seeing a lot of the same things in Happy Death Day over and over again, and she is in a time loop, her days and times never overlap. Mm -hmm. Which makes that an easier movie to watch. It's a simpler movie. Like, you, once you understand what's happening to her, you know that when she dies, she wakes up. The same thing yeah, happens. Yeah, it's never, like, her watching over what she's doing in, like, the current... Yeah. Like, no overlapping Which is dimensions. What this movie does. This is... Time is a circle. And um, it's never ending. It has always been going. It will always be going. And shut up. The triangle comes from the, the name, name of the, of the boat. boat. When which I wasn't first, even that important. When I first when I first saw this movie, went to go see it, I <coughs> thought it was gonna be about the Bermuda Triangle. Me too. It was not. I'm 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 not I'm not mad about it. I still like this movie. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you guys, I didn't know what the fuck kind of subgenre of horror movie this was. I don't think I still know. But I was like, is it, time loop. <laughs> is it supernatural? Is it time loop? Is it serial killer? Is it all of the above? It's like Dante's Inferno meets <coughs> Groundhog's Day meets What Dreams May Come in a fucked up way. Like, because I think, I have some theories about what happens and where she, what, it, what happens when the end of this movie comes about. So, we're going to, uh... We're going to try to do our narrative style the way we normally do. <coughs> it's not going to work, but we're going to try. And we're going to jump around a lot, and it's going to be confusing. But just know that there's a time loop going on. <coughs> and that, <coughs> Sorry. And you're fine. And that while one thing is happening, several other things are happening at the same time. And when something mysterious happens, it definitely gets explained later. So. 
Uh, it opens on Melissa George <coughs> with her little autistic son who's crying, and she's telling him, oh, it's just a bad dream. It's just a bad dream. Don't freak out. And then... This kid is terrified. Yes. And then all of a sudden it, like, weirdly cuts to her looking, like, fucking... I still, I don't know what happened at the beginning of this movie. I already forgot. Well, I mean, it, it's a little confusing because it's, like, following her and her son and, like... They're going to... Someone knocked on her door. Yes, but then no one was there when she got there. And then they're in the car driving. She's to... covered in paint. She doesn't know what's going on. They And they go to... Tri- well, she ends up at Triangle Harbor, yes. which is where her friends are meeting her. Which the name of the boat is also Triangle. Which is a lame name for a boat. You want it to be sexy. Also, I thought, can't boat names only be like one, like horses or whatever? Like no one else can be named that that boat name. How's Triangle not already? You know what I mean? Like a username. Yeah, name? it should have been like Destiny's Triangle or Triangle yeah. cir- Circle or Squid, this movie squid makes no Game. Sense, boat. Um, at PlayStation controller. Yeah. So, um, if this sounds confusing, it's because it is. This is all the dabs. This is all intercut. Oh wait, no, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> we get high and talk about horror movies, guys. Give me a fucking break. I meant to look up this uh, writer director, written and directed by Christopher Smith. I don't know what else you've done. But your brain's weird. So. <laughs> Um, True. We meet the rest of the cast. We meet Greg, who's got the mustache and is the is the controller of the boat, the pilot, the captain. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the skipper. We meet Jess. Is our is Melissa George? That's our main character. Our and she shows up frazzled as fuck. Yes. She looks like she was. This is my new favorite saying: "Rode hard and hung up wet." Yeah, I like that. That's how those um, girls looked in Hostel. Uh, baby Shitty Hemsworth is Victor. I literally wrote Baby Hemsworth. Um, the one who hurt Miley. <laughs> I won't let it go. Um, and then there's a woman <laughs> named Sally, <coughs> who is married to Downey. <coughs> and Sarah and Greg are friends from high school. And then they, and then Sally. Did I say Sarah? Mm-hmm. Sally and Greg are friends from, like, high school or college. And then Sally brought along Heather. Who's Heather? Doesn't matter. She won't be necessary in about 15 minutes. Um, she disappears from the movie. I liked Heather. She disappears from the film I know. completely. No, I know, I know. And I was bummed because she was nice. She was like a girl's girl. She, uh, so Sally brings her friend Heather along. Trying and to hook her up with Downey. Greg. Greg... Invited Jess along, our Melissa George character, uh, because she's a waitress at a diner and he likes her. And then Greg also has Victor with him, who is living on his boat with him, because he's a, I don't know, some weird guy who's on the run or something. I don't know, we didn't get a good good idea. Once that's all set, we set sail. Cool. We get this weird little Sally is trying to hook Heather and Greg up because she doesn't like Jess. But again, that doesn't matter because Heather disappears in about five minutes. But she's, like, being so mean. She's like, I'm sorry that she has a redacted son. I'm yeah. like, again, with the R word. That happened a lot in the last episode, oh too. Oh, gosh. Yeah. We don't... This one was, like, particularly harmful, though. Yes. Because yes. she's, like, giving this woman a hard time about having an autistic son. Also, fuck Jess. Yeah. Well, we don't find that out till later. I know. Till later. But... That so was, there are a lot of fucking plot twists in this movie. One of uh, the first like creepy things that happens that you're kind of like, wait, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, Liam Hemsworth character Victor uh, tells Greg, "Hey, I don't think she's okay," and he's like, "Oh, why?" And he's like, "Cause I asked her why her son wasn't with her, like she said he was gonna be, and she, she said she didn't remember." She paused. And then Greg's like, oh, well, he's got school. And he's like, but it's Saturday. He's Well, he's got a special school, so he goes every day of the week. 
Um, so that's kind of your, that's the first, like, okay, what's going on? What's, where's the spooky stuff? And her son's name is Tommy, which was my dad's name. Yes. Um, so, oh, I love this. So they set sail. We're kind of getting to know these characters, but again, you really don't need to know a whole lot about them, especially Heather. Um, poor, right. Poor Heather. She's so pretty, too. The Justice actress is for gorgeous. Heather. Justice for Heather. She even, like... Although, Sus- because she didn't get on the ship, does that mean she's not damned for eternity? Because she's such a nice person? That's why she got kicked off the first boat and probably got saved? Probably. Or at least just, like, went to heaven. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was thinking, I was like, she died a solo death. Yeah, but, but, like, because she was raptured and went to heaven. Like, these people are stuck in... Limbo. What I assume is hell. Like her own personal, you know what I mean? But right. I think Heather got off the boat because she was such a good person. Yeah, because Susan was trying to basically force her on Greg. Like, I hate when people try to set two people up. Like when that. clearly Greg and Jess are flirting. And if it happens naturally, it happens, but I don't like when two people try. Anyway, the second so, that Jess walked away, Heather's like, hey, by the way, I'm not interested. Not interested. And I was like, I like pigtails. I didn't know her name at first. I just called her pigtails. And her. turns out I didn't need to know her name because it yes. wasn't. Sadly. R.I.P. Justice for Heather. Justice for Heather. Um, so this is a really creepy scene. They're sailing and then all the wind and everything just stops. The water is completely flat and clear. There's no wind. There's no nothing. It's just silent. And they're it was like, so creepy. What the fuck? Um, so they try to call. They see this big weird storm rolling in. They try to use their ship to shore is what it's called. Yeah, it's called a ship to shore. So they try to use that, and they hear this weird message coming over it of another distress call, and then everything cuts out. Coast Guard and everybody, they can't hear anything. And then the storm rolls in, and it's one of the scariest scenes in the entire movie because I have a fear of the ocean. I, and these waves are so scary. I am so scared of the ocean. I said, I hate the ocean, man. So scary. It, like, it's just this tiny little boat on these big-ass waves, and I'm like... And they're trying to, like, cut the... This scene is so tense, and I felt the same way. I felt claustrophobic. I couldn't... I was like... (gasps) Because they're all, like, below deck, but then there's, like, a skylight, and Liam Hemsworth's character, Victor, he falls and breaks the skylight, and so water is now coming in from the top. While he's trying to cut down the sails so that it doesn't... So the boat can, yeah, not Capsize, flip, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, so it does, it does. anyways. And they all eventually, <clears throat> except for Heather, wind up on the upturned boat, and they're just kind of sitting there. Yeah, she was out. just gone. I don't know what happened to Heather. Yeah. Uh, so this, I numbered my people in my groups, mainly Jess, because that's who we're going to follow. I've got, we're going to be talking about Jess 1, which is this Jess right here. This is our initial Jess, Jess 1. I'm going to talk about Jess 2 in a little while. And then I'm going to talk about Baghead Jess, which is technically OG Jess. But we're just going to call her Baghead Jess. Because when I first saw her, I was like, oh, look, it's Baghead Jason. But it's not. (laughs) Um, So it's Baghead Jess. So uh, that's how I'm going to refer to these people. Because that's the only way I know how to explain this. So, we are on the triangle ship, and the, this giant, enormous ship floats into view, and it's the Elis, is that how you pronounce it, Elis? Something like that. It's A-E-O-L-U-S, that's what you should have written up there. Um, Oh. I didn't even think about it. So, anyway, that's the name of the ship that rolls up, and, um, they board this ship thinking oh shit we're saved that's awesome but right before they do they see someone on deck they don't see their face or anything because it's like hidden in the light like by the sunshine and when they're calling out for help the person like disappears like they walk away so eventually our group gets on the boat starts looking around there's no one around total ghost ship uh they can't find anybody um it's kind of like a maze. They're, like, walking around, but, like, the hallways don't really make sense. Um, and the whole time, Jess is like, I feel like I know this place. I'm getting really bad deja vu. I feel like I've been here before. You feel like someone is, like, watching you the entire time. Yes. Uh, we do get these really long shots, like, down hallways where it's, like, we're somebody far away, like, looking in on them, which obviously makes sense later. Uh, they do one of my favorite parts. 
of, so the reason this is called Aeolus or whatever is that is the father of Sisyphus. And if you know Sisyphus, he is the one that was doomed to roll the rock up the mountain every day only for it to go back down to the bottom and him have to roll it back up ever. So he's doomed for eternity to relive the exact same thing mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Very thematically resonant. resonant. Uh, last time that happened in a movie where... Never mind. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of our little first little like hint of what kind of movie this is going to be. Um, they, at one point, they hear someone drop keys and then they find the keys and it's Jess's keys. And then they go into, <coughs> we're going to kind of roll through this for a little while because it, we go through some specific points so that we can come back to them later. So we find room 237, which I thought was very funny. I didn't know you <laughs> that. I didn't. Um, they find some blood written on a mirror in 237 that says go to theater. So then they like go to the theater. There's a really cool shot where, like, the mirrors are kind of bent in, so you get three versions of her, which is very prescient. Well, also, Jess told uh, Susan, and then what's her husband's name? Downey. Downey. To it's say. Sally and Downey. I said, I keep saying Susan. <laughs> you said Sarah. I said I know, Susan. It's Sally. Sally. She's a bitch. Yeah. But uh, Jess told her and her husband to stay in the banquet hall. Yes. But then they end up in the theater somehow. Yes, somehow they do end up in the theater mm -hmm. after she saw the note that said to go to the so theater. So that's why she went to the theater. Um, but then Jess goes back to... No, Jess doesn't go to the theater first. She goes back to the ballroom to oh, get yeah. Sally and Downey. And that's when Victor shows up. I know this sounds very fucking confusing because it is. So Victor shows up and he's got this... He starts choking Jess. And so it's just the two of them in the ballroom. He starts choking Jess and Jess, like, fingers this hole in the back of his head, and then he dies. Oh, yeah. Jess went away from Greg because he was a dick to her, basically saying, like, whatever's going on in your little world. Yeah, that's the scene where she's like, my world is waiting outside of school for me. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so. So that's why she went off, and then she went back to the banquet hall where... They were supposed to be waiting, and she was alone, and that's Victor when shows Victor up, shows up. Tries to kill her. She the kills hole Victor. In his fucking head. Yes, and he's, like, covered in blood when she sees him. Tries to do that. So then she runs to the theater where Greg is shot, and Sally and Downey are like, Greg said you did it, you bitch. But then Baghead, this scary bag-headed motherfucker who literally looks like Jason in <laughs> uh, Friday 2, um, before he gets his mask. Or like the town that dreaded sundown Very or much the yeah. town that dreaded sundown. Which is what they got the inspiration for Jason from. The right. original Jason mask. Um, so it, they're like up in the rafters shooting at them. Uh, they end up getting everybody but Jess. Jess runs out of the theater. Um, I, lo I literally wrote, oh look, it's back at Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so Jess gets back up to the boat deck. She's Everyone else for... is dead. Yeah, she's looking for lifeboats. There are none. None, of course. It's very Titanic. Uh, and then on the deck, her and Baghead get into a fight. Cracked her on the skull with the gun. That shit was yeah. a... I screamed. It's a good fight. It was a good jump scare. Yeah. Because it was so, like, in the middle of the day, and I just wasn't expecting it to happen like that. And right. it was like... Yeah. Agreed. It was cool. Um, so... They get into an axe fight. They start... It's a really good um, fight scene. My favorite part that we actually get to see, like, two or three times, because it is a time loop movie, is when Baghead runs out of ammo and just chucks the gun at Jess. <laughs> I fucking love that. It's one of my favorite things. So, um... I love they it. They get into a fight, and eventually... Hi, but... Bro threw his gun at her, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Jess eventually gets the upper hand, bag and Baghead, like, kind of jumps over the side, kind of gets pushed over the side, and falls <laughs> into the ocean. So, <laughs> is this a time loop movie? 
It took me a little bit longer to realize what was happening. This is about the time you should realize it's Okay, cool. Because before this, you have no idea what's going on. Cool, Only I did. reason I do is because I had seen it before. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yes, yeah, so right around now is when you're like, wait, first of all, this seems like the end of the movie, but I'm only a third of the way through. And, yeah, uh, Baghead is like, you can't really hear what she's saying this time around, but she's saying, um, kill them all. You have to kill them all. If they board, you have to kill them all. So she goes over the side, or Baghead goes over the side, and Jess Wan is standing there. This is when I'm going to start talking to them in these turns, talking about them in these turns. Jess Wan is standing there with the axe that she had swung to get Baghead off. Looking over the side of the deck, off the deck, she sees the triangle floating up with what I'm going to say is group two. And so the person that she initially saw when she was on the triangle up on the deck was herself. So now she's repeating this. Now she's the person up on the deck. So we get group two coming onto the boat. This is when shit starts getting crazy. <laughs> So she starts hiding from this new group. One thing that I really love is the second time that the triangle comes up and sees her, the Aeolus or Aeolus and the ship, it's completely reversed. So the um, the letters are going the opposite way and the ship is going the, a different oh. way. So it's like a complete mirror image oh, that second cool. time around. Yeah, I, thought, I didn't catch that. Yeah, that's cool. But um, she's hiding and that's when we get... The scene where she, like, bends down and her keys fall out of her pocket. Yes. And that's when, you know, we go, like, remember back to the scene from earlier where they found her keys randomly. Yep. So she was the one. So Jess, one, dropped it. Jess, two, and them find it. Um, Jess, one, sees the body, a random body of Downey in the water. Mm -hmm. Don't know which version that is. Um, and one, when she sees that body, after she sees it, Victor, two... <laughs> Comes up to Jess One, who we've been with since the beginning, and Jess is like, there's a copy of me here. There's something fucked up going on. You have to believe me. And she's, like, trying to get him to understand her, and he's like, you're freaking out. And she's, like, kind of shaking him and pushing him a little bit, and she pushes him right into this fucking, like, spike rebar or something poking out, and it just goes right into his brain. Ugh. So she's like, fuck, I didn't do that. And then she runs away. So then, of course, that's when we would know that Victor would start. So it's Victor 2. Anyway, so... That's where we, like, see she finds these notes everywhere saying, if they board, kill them all. Yes, and she writes it again. I don't know if she, why she does that. Does she write it to see if it's her own handwriting? I don't know if it was my handwriting. Just right, I don't know. But she writes it again. She writes the same paper. Um, and then... She, oh, this is one of my favorite scenes, too. Uh, when she's hiding from group two, she sees, like, this grate, and there's this, like, pile of shiny things down at the bottom, and she, like, looks down to see, notices it's the locket that she has on with her son's, like, picture on it, and when she pulls back, the le the necklace drops down into the pile. And it's just piles and piles and piles of lockets. As it's, her son. I, it was such a creepy scene where it's, like, you know, she... Anyway, I said, how long has she been reliving this day? Yeah. How long has she, how many times has she done this? So then Victor 2, who Jess just spiked in the back of the head, finds Jess 2 in the ballroom. So we expect he's about to choke her and she'll finger the back of his hole. But it's different this time. Jess 1 walks in with a shotgun. And she, yes, so then... Just one and just two are looking at each other, like, oh shit, there's the copy of myself. Just two runs away. We hear some gunshots. Hold on. Um. Yes. Oh yeah, so the. Killer bag had just took the bag off to trick Sally and. Oh, Downey. I think that's way later. Huh? Really? Yeah. Yeah, she came face to face with herself. They need to change the pattern. And then Killer Jess tricked Sally and Downey. Oh, and then was that stabbed right then? them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, so but I love my son. Before she does that, 
Um, yes, Jess one is trying to change the pattern. So she goes and tries to save Downey and Sally from the theater shooting, and mm -hmm. she does. And then that's when the other baghead Jess comes and tricks them, stabs them both. Very brutal scene. Stabs them in room 237. Oh, my God. So. But Sally didn't die yet. She made it to the radio room. Yeah. And it was her radio call, like, for help. That they heard, heard earlier. Earlier on the triangle. So then, this is so fucking confusing. I Well, yeah, next is when yeah. Sally's, like, running away from the other Jess, who didn't just stab her. But she thinks did. But she thinks did. There's and some she, really good chase scenes. They go... Really good chase scenes in this movie. This part's so cool. They get up to the top of the boat, and there is just hundreds of Sally's dead corpse piled yeah. up there in the same outfit. And she's, just like, crawling just crawling away. backwards, like, into this pile of dead versions of herself. It's fucking wild. Yes. So, <coughs> I know that was a lot, but basically, things happen differently, but everyone's dead again. Um, and when Sally dies, Jess 2, this is Jess 2, Jess 1? Jess 1 stands up. <laughs> Looks out at the deck, sees Jess 2 and Baghead doing their fight that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as Baghead goes over the side, the triangle pulls back up. And she says, it returns when everyone's dead. So once everyone on the ship, except for Jess, is dead, the triangle boat returns. And mm -hmm. so Jess thinks that if she can be there when the boat returns, she can get on it and get off the boat and stop the time loop. So she just has to murder all her friends, be there when they return, when their copies or whatever return, and then just make sure they don't get on the boat. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're going with this. That's that's what she's trying to do. <laughs> so she's trying to stop this fucking big ass boat, like in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, impossible. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is when she starts becoming Baghead Jess. Because she sees all the other stuff that we've already seen happen a bunch of times. She writes on the mirror, go to the theater. She throws Greg's body over, tells Sally and Downey to go to the theater, which makes sense because earlier we knew that one of the Jesses had told them to stay in the ballroom. <laughs> And they went to the theater anyway. Why? Because Bag Chess, Baghead Jess told them to go to the theater. Grabs her Baghead suit and her outfit on. Uh, and we get the scene that I was waiting for because I kept... So the whole movie, Melissa George is wearing these chunky brown heels, like um, wedges, like the wicker wedges, mm -hmm. basically. And so I keep thinking... She's wearing this jumpsuit, but you gotta see the heels. And she's, like, standing up in this area with uh, Greg, and Greg sees the heels, but she shoots him anyway. He falls over. So that's when Sally and Downey find him. Mm -hmm. And that's when one of the Jesses runs in, and Baghead Jess from the top is shooting. So now we're seeing all the stuff we saw at the beginning, but we're seeing it all from Baghead's perspective. Mm -hmm. So now we're seeing why she did that, how she ran from there. And got into the fight on the deck. And we can hear what she's saying now. Because she's telling the Jess that's fighting her. Like you have to kill them all. When they board you have to kill them all. So. After all of that. Baghead. So at the end of that first fight. You saw Baghead go into the water. Mm -hmm. Now we are from Baghead's perspective. We fall into the water as Jess. And then we wake up on a beach. Which is a dream she had had early, or randomly. And mm -hmm. she, but she's just on a beach. She's back on land. Mm -hmm. And she walks to the road. She... And you're like, oh shit! Hitchhiked and sprinted home. It very much gave me Silent Hill vibes at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of that movie, that's the vibes it was giving me. And then, you know, we see the opening scene was like... 
shot with like you can see the neighbor mowing his grass and then like it cuts to like seeing the child through the window that's all happening again except she she's sees her herself yeah uh her original self through the window she's watching uh be a really shitty mom yeah just like really angry and she smacks her kid and for like spilling some stuff and he was like scared and that's like why he accidentally spilled the paint and she smacked the shit out of i think it's because he saw the other version of his mom outside oh yeah 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 and got scared and spilled the paint so she like smacks him she freaks out um i was like this kid's gonna be fucked up for life so our jess that we've been following that's sitting outside knocks on the door and runs around to the back and grabs an axe and then when mom that's still in the dress that we saw earlier comes back, she gets axed to death. In front of the child. So then we're back at that very opening scene where she's comforting her child. And she's like, that wasn't mommy. That was a dream. It's okay. You were just having a nightmare. That that's all it Bad was. dreams make you feel things. Um, so then she packs her own dead body, which we saw her doing earlier. But we didn't know it was a dead body because she put a bunch of clothes on top of it. And then they're in the car. So you're kind of thinking, like, did she, like, was her killing her self, like, the way to get out of it? Because now she knows how to be a good parent. She knows how shitty she's been. Um, She's even telling her son that in the car. Like, things are going to be different now. That wasn't Mommy's nice. Mommy's nice now. And I didn't. Whatever. Um, The kid's like, the fuck you are. So um, she hits a bird. And when she pulls over, we see this, like, high school band playing this music that we had heard playing on the boat on a record player earlier. I didn't notice. I didn't know if you knew it was the same song playing. Oh, yeah. So she's hearing, she looks across the street, sees this band playing the song, and she knows it's the song that was playing on the boat. So she gets back into the car and drives away really fast, and then... She crashes into a fucking semi... Flips the fucking car. Smashes. Everybody falls out. So, her dead body that she axed and the son are dead from the car. Like, they are they flew out of the car. And then she's standing on the side of the road, like, alive. hmm And uh, this guy comes up and he's like, I'm just a driver. Do you need a ride somewhere? And so we know... So... She's like, yeah, take me to Triangle Harbor. So she now she goes back. So here is my theory and what I assume happened. She and her son, on the way to this, to the harbor, to meet Greg and them, died in a car crash. And because she was such a shitty person, her punishment in hell is to repeat this whole scenario over and over again for all of eternity. Mm-hmm. And so this is where she died. She goes to the triangle boat, whatever. I don't know if those people are dead, too, maybe. They go through the whole thing. She has to go through. And every time she gets back to the beginning and she thinks she's won, they go through the car crash again and they die. And so when she does get back to the harbor and we see Liam Hemsworth and he's like, hey, where's your son? And I thought, you know, he was coming, too. She's like, He's, uh, he's at school and she just looks really confused and she like takes a nap and basically forgets everything. And that's why it restarts. And she thinks, oh, I can do it this time. I can do it this time. But then you get back to the beginning and you realize you're just restarting it. So you think you broke it by getting off the ship, but getting off the ship was just part of the loop. And that's why this movie's devastating. And I really liked it. You know, it was a little hard to follow at times, but I thought it was pretty good. It was hard to talk about, and I'm sorry if this was, like, just us all explaining plot. I try to work other things in when we're talking about it, like themes and stuff, (laughs) but this was just a really fucking confusing movie, and I just wanted to watch it again and talk about it. I mean, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I think it, like I said, I was all over the place. Yeah. With it. Yeah, part of the reason I wanted to watch it, again, is because I really do like Melissa George, who was in the remake for Amityville Horror with Ryan Reynolds. Yes. I did not like the remake, but it's just because I didn't really like the original. I just don't think Amityville's that. I just think it's a boring movie. Um, Not my fave. But she was great in it. I love her. 
And she's in a couple other things. I just uh, rediscovered this movie again because a pod- different podcast covered it. And I was like, ooh, I want to watch that. So we what did podcast? that. podcast? Deadbeat. <laughs> Shocker. Shocker. I'm going to beat them soon. Sorry, please continue. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad that I picked this, but I never want to talk about another time loop movie on this podcast. I would do Happy Death Day because that isn't confusing. That I love that over- movie. Let, overlap. I love that movie too. Um, Christopher Landon is great. I would have loved to see his version of Scream, <coughs> but fuck you, Spyglass, for ruining my favorite franchise. <laughs> But, but. Um, I don't know what we're covering next time, but we will try to let you know in advance. If not, whatever. Uh, we'll just <laughs> assume you've seen it. Right. Uh, I do, I would really love to cover Lisa Frankenstein soon because it was so fucking good. And I, I just, I loved it. I love Catherine Newton. I think she's awesome. Speaking of Christopher Landon, he also did Freaky. Um, Lisa Frankenstein was written by Diablo Cody. So or if you are a Jennifer's Body fan... This is right up your alley. It's that exact same type of horror. Um, I just thought it was so cute. So uh, we'll be at Horror Hound soon. Like she said, we'll have some good uh, Horror Hound videos. We'll have some little interviews with the little mini mic and stuff, um, which we're really excited about. Yeah. But until then, until next time, make sure you follow us on Instagram and uh, TikTok at Barely Living Dreadful. You can email us, barelylivingdreadful at gmail.com with comments, questions, concerns, requests, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then please make sure you like and subscribe to YouTube. That's, like, our biggest thing. Um, so even if you listen to, like, Apple on, like, podcasts like Spotify and Apple and all that, rate and review us there, but also go and like and subscribe to the YouTube. Because I know you have a YouTube channel, even if you don't listen to us on the YouTube Wherever you are, just please give us more likes because we love you and you love us. Um, But yeah, until next week, stay spooky. Bye. Bye.